In this video, we're going to bring together all the exponent properties into one problem. Now, before we do, I want to quickly review the exponent properties that we've seen thus far. The first one says that if we have a to the m, a to the n, multiplying the bases, we should add the exponents, giving us a to the m plus n. Similarly, with a to the m over a to the n, we should subtract the exponents, a to the m minus n. We also saw some power rules where the exponent can go through parentheses onto each factor that's multiplied, giving us a to the m, b to the m, or the exponent can go through a fraction onto the numerator and denominator, giving us a to the m over b to the m. And as we do this, as we move through parentheses, sometimes an exponent goes on to an exponent, which means in that case, the power of a power rule tells us we need to multiply those exponents together. We also saw that anything to the 0 power is always equal to 1. And then finally, we saw the negative exponent rules, which basically tell us to move the base either up or down, making the exponent negative. So if we have a to the negative m, that's technically over 1, which means we need to move the a to the m, this time, down into the denominator as a positive with a 1 on top. If the negative exponents in the denominator, we'll move a to the m up to the numerator, in this case, over 1. We don't need to write the over 1. And finally, if the negative exponent is on a fraction, we'll flip the fraction over, maybe b over a, and then take care of the positive exponent on a second step. Now, to keep track of all these exponent properties, it might be tricky to know which one to do first. Well, the nice thing about exponent properties is there's some flexibility with this. But to kind of guide us, we're going to keep in mind the order of operations, which is going to tell us to first simplify anything inside any parentheses, then do any exponents or power rules going through parentheses, and then finally multiply and divide the bases, which means we're going to add the exponents. Now, as far as the negative exponents go, we can take care of them in two different places either before or after the multiply and divide step. And most of the time, we'll do it before, but on occasion, it'll be nice to do it after, such as in this first example. In this first example, we see lots of stuff happening. Keeping order of operations in mind, we'll look inside the parentheses first. Gee, there's nothing to do. Can't combine the x's, can't combine any y's, numbers, they're all different. So instead, we're going to move to the power rules and move that exponent through parentheses, both the squared and the fourth power. As we do so, we end up with 4 to the second power. Be careful, that 4 is a base. Don't multiply that. 4 squared is 16. That's 4 times 4. Then on the x's, we'll multiply exponents. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. y to the 2 times 2 is 4. z to the 1 times 2 is 2 times, multiplying the exponent through. Remember, the 2's a base. That's not 2 times 4, that's 2 to the 4th power. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. x to the 4 times 4 is 16. y to the negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. And z to the 3 times 4 is 12. Now that we've taken care of the power rules, we could move our negative exponents up and down. But what I notice here is we don't have a fraction right now. And if I don't have a fraction right now, I don't want to create one until the end. Don't make a fraction until you have to. So instead, let's jump right to the multiply step. 16 times 16 is 256. Multiplying the x's together, we know that means we have to add the exponents. So we get x to the negative 10 plus 16 is 6. y to the 4 plus negative 8 is negative 4 z to the 2 plus 12 is 14. Now that we're towards the very end, now we'll take care of that negative exponent, moving it down, giving us 256, x to the 6th, z to the 14th, all in the numerator, over y to the positive 4th power. When simplifying with exponents, we know we're done when there's no more negative exponents, and each variable appears only once. Let's take a look at the second example. This one's a little more involved, but the process and pattern is still the same. 
first we look inside the parentheses and check, is there anything we can do inside parentheses? Again, no, there's nothing we can do inside parentheses. So now we'll take any exponents through parentheses, and in this case, we've got several that can go on to each factor. And as we do, we know we need to multiply exponents, but be careful with the base that's a number. That technically means 2 to the negative 4th. What's 2 to the negative 4th? Well, I'm not sure. So let's just write 2 to the negative 4th for now, and we'll see what happens with it. Be careful, negative exponents will never make numbers negative. That is not a negative 2 to the 4th, that is 2 to the negative 4th. x to the 2 times negative 4 is negative 8, y to the negative 3 times negative 4 is 12, times x to the 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, y to the negative 6 times negative 2 is positive 12, all over x to the negative 6 times 2 is negative 12, y to the 4 times 2 is 8. And now, because we already have a fraction, now we might as well move all these negative exponents around. There's three negative exponents that need to move. So going across the numerator, the 2 to the 4th needs to move down, x to the 8th needs to move down, y to the 12th stays where it is, x to the negative 8th moves down, and y to the 12th stays where it is. In the denominator, the x to the negative 12th needs to move up, and the y to the 8th stays where it is. And as we move everything, they become positive. Continuing to simplify, let's combine now the x's and y's in the numerator. The y's in the numerator, we add the exponents, we get y to the 24th, x to the 12th, over, let's also go ahead, 2 to the 4th is 16, x to the 8 plus 8 is also 16, y to the 8th. Still not done, because we still have several variables on there, so now, or several y's and several x's, now we'll subtract the x's and subtract the y's to see what's left. Starting with the y's, y to the 24th minus 8, that's y to the positive 16th. So positive, it goes in the numerator. On the x's, 12 minus 16 is negative 4. If we end up with a negative when we subtract, that means the answer ends up in the denominator. Putting it in the denominator takes care of the negative, and so 12 minus 16 was negative 4, so now we've got positive 4, and don't forget the 16 in the denominator. And we get our final answer, y to the 16th over 16x to the 4th. Couple hints that might help us keep track of things. When we're moving all these negative exponents around, it's a common error I see students lose a variable accidentally. So it might be helpful to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 parts. See if you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 parts after you move things around. Make sure you don't lose anybody. Finally, as a wrap-up, I want to point out that there are lots of different parts and types of problems in these exponent problems. I couldn't possibly show them all to you. That means as you work through the problems, you're going to come up with different styles of problems that didn't exactly look like this video. However, using your critical thinking skills, keeping track of the order of operations, you'll find the pattern used to solve is still the same in every problem.